with the seal of God in their four heads. Mark this, a spirit-filled Christian that is keeping the seventh day Sabbath truly has the seal of God. I say a spirit-filled Christian that is keeping the seventh day Sabbath truly has the seal of God. But what about the mark of the beast? Does the mark of the beast also have something to do with God's law? Evidently so. Let's notice again the warning about the mark from uh, Revelation chapter 14 verse number 9. And the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his mark and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, you see, and actually then verse number 10 tells us that those who receive the mark will end up in hellfire. Here is actually the warning from God not to receive the mark. In contrast to those who worship the beast and receive his mark, we have the saints. Actually, John describes them in Revelation chapter 14, verse number 12. He says, Here is the patience of the saints, here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Evidently, those who receive the mark of the beast are not doing works. They are not keeping works. They are not keeping the commandments. Because if they, are, they were keeping up to the commandments, they will be among the saints. So again, we can be able to see that those who keep all the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus will not worship the beast or receive his mark at end time. So evidently, both the seal of God and the mark of the beast have to do with God's law. They both have to do with loyalty, and they both have something to do with God's law. But we haven't yet answered the question, what really, what really is the mark of the beast? The mark of the beast, or the beast with the mark, and the number 66 is described in the book of Revelation 13. And before we can correctly identify the mark of the beast, uh, or what the mark of the beast is, we must know who is the beast, right? We must know that. Here is actually the book title of a popular Christian novel. The title is The Mark. Notice actually the subtitle. It says, the beast rules the world, but who is the beast? The reason why most Christians today have no idea what is the mark of the beast is because they have no idea who is the beast. If you don't know who the beast is, how can you be able to know or not actually whether or not I am his mark? So let's go review again the description of this beast found in Revelation chapter 13. We will begin with verses number 1 to 3. To have a review of who is this beast. John says in Revelation chapter 13 verse number 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and I saw a what? A computer microchip. Or a what? A beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns. And upon his horns ten crowns. And upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast I saw was like unto, and his feet were as the feet of a what? And his mouth as a mouth of a, and the gave him his power, and his seat, and the and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and how much? All the world wandered after the beast. Who or what is this beast? Actually, most of the Bible scholars agree that this beast is a symbol of the Antichrist. However, we have learned already today that a beast in prophecy represents a kingdom. Daniel chapter 7, verse number 23 said, Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth. In Bible prophecy, a beast represents a kingdom or a nation. That means that the beast of Revelation chapter 13 has to be a kingdom. The Antichrist, as we saw, was actually represented in Daniel chapter number 7 by the little horn. And the little horn 
represents a little kingdom. And the list of religions that are changed has to be a religious kingdom because the world worships it. When you put those two together, you have a little religious kingdom. And Revelation chapter 13 indicates that this little religious kingdom will be based in Rome. There is only one little religious kingdom based in Rome, and that is the Vatican. Again, let me remind you, we are not talking of against Catholics, we are identifying a kingdom, not people who might be in one, or, or in one way or another connected to that kingdom. We found last night a little clues about this kingdom. Let's review them again. Number one, among the ten, actually that is in Western Europe, that fits the Vatican. Number two, after 476, uh, it was 538 when the Vatican came to power. We established that from history last night. Number three, it would be a little kingdom or a little horn. The Vatican is the world's smallest independent nation. Number four, it would approve three. And those who were the Heruli, the Vandals and the Ostrogoths, they were overthrown because they refused to acknowledge the supremacy of the Bishop of Rome. Number five, it would be, it would have a human leader. And who is that? The Pope. Okay. Number six, it would be diverse or different. Vatican is different from all the other kingdoms in Western Europe. The only kingdom in Europe today where a church dictates the policies of the states. Number seven, it will blaspheme God. And we found out two definitions of blasphemy in the Bible. John chapter 10, verse number 3. Blasphemy is when a man makes himself God on earth. We saw that, that the Pope claims to be God on earth. And Luke chapter 5, verse number 21. Blasphemy is when a man claims the power to forgive sin. The, both the Pope and the priest claim they have the power to forgive us our sins. And who should we go to for our forgiveness, beloved? We should go to Jesus. And many Catholics are doing it, and they are confessing their sins directly to Jesus. Number eight, it will be a persecuting power. We saw last night that the Church of Rome itself is means that it puts over 50 million people to death during the Dark Ages. Number nine, changes God's law. It will actually attempt all things it could. We saw it in the Catechism that the fourth commandment has been changed, the second commandment has been removed, and the tenth commandment has been divided into two. Then number ten, it will rule for 1,260 years. We saw that the Vatican actually came to power in 538, then 1,260 years later, in, 19, in 1788, Napoleon, his general, went to Rome and took the Pope captive and abolished the papal government. So number 10 fits the Vatican. It would be, number 11, based in Rome. Vatican, of course, is based in Rome. And then we added a 12th clue, that is 666. Let me remind you that 666 is not the mark of the beast. Rather, 666 is the number of the beast. We saw that in Revelation chapter 13, verse number 17. Um, the Bible says, let's review, the Bible says, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name. There actually we see three separate issues. The mark, the name, and the number. And what is the number of the beast? 666. Six, six. Notice again verse number 18. Here is wisdom, letting the has understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a what? A barcode, a microchip, a what? A man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. 
of 666. Not only is the number of a man, but also is the number of the beast. And verse number 17 said it was the number of his name. When we put those three together, the number of his name, number one, the number of a man, number two, and the number of uh, the beast, number three, we discovered actually last night that it will have the number of the name of the man at the head of the beast. That will be the Pope. We saw last night that the Pope has an official name. And what is his official name? Vicarious Filde, which means Vicar, the all substitute for the Son of God. And the Bible said in verse number 18 that we had to count the number to arrive to 666. We counted the number of the Pope, his official name, last night, and we saw that it had it up to 666. Remember, in Latin, certain numbers or certain letters have certain numerical values. And the current field day adds up to 666, just as the prophecy had said. So all the twelve identifying marks fit the Vatican Kingdom. Remember, we are identifying a kingdom here, not Catholic people. Now that we know who the beast is, it is not hard to discover his mark. All we need to do is to ask the beast power, that is the Vatican, what is their mark of authority? We are actually asking them. We are not going to guess. What is the mark of the beast? We also, actually we learned already that the Sabbath, that is Saturday, is God's mark, the sign of his authority. So the mark of the beast must be the sign of the beast is all the purposes authority. And what is it? Beloved, let's go back to our list of clues to find out. Uh, point number nine was the Antichrist power would change God's law. We go to clue number nine, would change God's law. And uh, we got that from the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse number 25, where the Bible said that the little horn, symbol of the Antichrist, would think to change times and laws. Think. In the original language, it actually reads this way, shall think to change time in the law. To change time in the law. The question is, has time in the law been changed? Do you know, beloved, there is one commandment in the word of the Lord that has time. Which commandment is that? The fourth commandment. When does the Sabbath begin? Sunset. When does it end? Do you know one of the things that Satan has done? He has actually changed the time in the law. At what time does the day begin? Midnight. According to the Roman clock, midnight. But really, in, according to God's timetable and Bible times, when does the day begin? Sunset. So that has been done intentionally, so that people can forget about the Sabbath and never think about it anymore. Can you tell me where in God's law do you find time mentioned? Of course, there is only one commandment that deals with time, and that is the fourth commandment. That is where actually God says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. That is holy time. The seventh day, which is the Sabbath. And the Bible predicted that the Antichrist power would think to change time in the law, on God's law. That will be attacking God's seal. The question is, did it happen? Let's find out from the Catech Converts Catechism of Catholic Doctrine, page 50. Question, which is the Sabbath day? Here is the answer from the Catechism. Saturday is the Sabbath. You know, they know the truth. It is in their books and they don't hide about it. Question, why do we observe Sunday instead of Sabbath? Here is the Roman Catholic answer. Because the Catholic Church transferred solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. There you have the fulfillment of Daniel chapter 7, verse number 25. 
prophecy saying the Antichrist power will think to change time in the law. And the Church of Rome says, yes, we did it. What I do? I want to play one of the clips here. I said that I will let you back a few of your minutes because I will be done late and you can play there with me. I want to play one of the clips here. Which did not come from God. Silent worship is of the devil. If you didn't know, read my lips. Let, let me explain something here. This is Pastor Lai. Pastor Lai is a Sunday chief. And he has one of the biggest cases in church in Mombasa. He was telling his members that Sunday is not of who. Just listen to the clip. Which did not come from God. Sunday worship is of the devil. If you didn't know, read my lips. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not a prophet of doom. I'm a prophet of God. I'm telling you, this thing about Sunday is what has weakened the church more than all the demons, more than every Satan, more than all the witches. Sunday worship is, is the greatest witchcraft of the church. Never was instructed by God. Read your Bible. Never. The church, when it was born, did not meet on Sunday. I know I'm getting into your house because you like to come to church on Sunday. I'm going to help you or discourage you. If you are discouraged, you will be discouraged because you are going nowhere. But if you are going somewhere, you will be. Somebody will jump in the inside of you and say, I'm living God. And I'm not going to live my peace anymore. Sunday worship was an intention of the devil to weaken the church. Nobody is saying, I'm not suggesting. I'm telling you, this is the truth. It's, it's revelation. Six days, how many days? <laughs> Six days they woke up early in the morning and they went round the wall. They didn't go round the wall on Sunday. How many days? Then on the seventh day. Then on the seventh day, which is not Sunday. The seventh day is Saturday. You get it? The level of people know the truth out here. It's only that they are so adamant. Here is another statement from a, a Catholic magazine. The Catholic Church designated Sunday as the day for corporate worship and it gets full credit or blame for the change. The Bible says this power will think to change time in the law. The prophecy said that he will actually think to change. Of course, we know that no church can actually change God's law. God's law is eternal as God himself. And the God says in Malachi chapter 3, verse number 6, I change not, but Rome will think or attempt to change God's law. Here is a statement from St. Catherine, Catholic Church, St. Lane Magazine, 21st, May 21st, 1985. Perhaps the boldest thing, the most revolutionary change the church, that is the Church of Rome, ever did happen in the first century. The holy day, the Sabbath, was changed not from any directions noted in the scriptures, but from the church's own sense of its own power. People think that the scripture should be the sole authority, should logically become seventh day Adventist and keep Saturday holy. This Catholic priest says, if you want to make the Bible your guide, then go join the Seventh-day Adventist and keep Saturday holy. Here's another statement from another Catholic priest, the late father, M. Wright. He said, I have repeatedly offered $1,000 to anyone who can prove to me from the Bible, alone, 
that I am bound to keep Sunday holy. There is no such a law in the Bible. It is a law of the Lord of the Holy Catholic Church alone. The Bible says, remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. The Catholic Church says, no, by my divine power, I abolish the Sabbath day and command you to keep holy the first day of the week. And Lord, the entire civilized world bows down in reverent obedience to the command of the Holy Catholic Church. There actually you have the issue of fulfillment of uh, Revelation chapter 13 verse number 3 where the Bible said the whole world will follow the beast. The Catholic priest says look, the entire civilized world bows down in reverent obedience to the command of the Holy Catholic Church. Beloved, the question is, who are you bowing to, friend? The day you choose to keep holy answers the question. But there is an evidence to that statement. You see, we don't work without a backup. I can preach the sites outside a police station without triggering about this issue. Listen to this. Where is my PA guy? I have repeatedly offered $1,000 to anyone who can prove to me from the Bible alone that I am bound to keep Sunday holy. There is no such law in the Bible. It is a law of the Holy Catholic Church alone. The Bible says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The Catholic Church says, no. By my divine power, I abolish the Sabbath day and command you to keep holy the first day of the week. And lo, the entire civilized world bows down in reverent obedience to the command of the Holy Catholic Church. T. N. Wright, C. S. S. R. In a lecture, Hartford, Kansas, February 18th, 1884. That is evidence. Beloved, here is a, a statement from Protestant Dr. Edward T. Hitchcock, author of the original Baptist manual. He said, There was and is a commandment to keep holy the Sabbath day. But that Sabbath day was not Sunday. It will be said, however, and with some show of time that the Sabbath was transferred from the seventh to the first day of the week. Where can the record of such a transaction be found? Not in the New Testament. Absolutely not, of course. I quite well know that Sunday did not did come into use in early Christian history as a religious day, as we learn from the Christian fathers and other sources. But what a pity that it comes branded with the mark of paganism and Christian with the name of the Son God when adopted and sanctioned by the papal apostasy and requited as a, a sacred legacy to Protestantism. Beloved, this great Baptist theologian has basically summarized what I have taught you. Sunday came to us from paganism and was given actually to the Protestant world through the papacy. Please notice the word mark. That is mark of paganism. Now we can actually answer the question, what specifically is the mark of the beast? The mark of the beast must be the sign of the Roman church's authority. And what is it? We will actually let from itself answer. This statement is from a spokesman of Rome. He said, of course, the Catholic Church claims the change was her act. That is the act of changing the Sabbath to Sunday. And the act is a mark of ecclesiastical power and authority in religious matters. 
What is the mark of the beast, beloved? What does a beast represent? What does a beast represent? Beloved, listen, a beast in prophecy, the Bible prophecy represents a kingdom. And what we have discovered that the, 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 that the beast of Revelation 13 is a symbol of the Vatican kingdom. The evidence is overwhelming. And the Vatican says, the act of changing Sabbath to Sunday is our mark of authority. You see, let me tell you, this is so bold. God has put the Sabbath here, Saturday. They have put their Sabbath Sunday. God has got the original Sabbath. They have their China Sabbath. Think of that. Here is another statement from the Catholic record, September 1st, 1923. Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible. And this transference of Sabbath, of, of Sabbath, is proof of that fact. The seal of God, that is the sign of his authority, is the Sabbath. The mark of the beast, the sign of Rome and Rome is uh, authority, is Sunday. You might be thinking, does that mean if I keep Sunday holy, I have the mark of the beast? Does anyone have the mark of the beast today? Beloved, no one will receive the mark of the beast until religious registration is passed and forcing Sunday of Sabbath. Some people say, well, I wait and see if it happens, then I'll be able to make my decision which day to keep. Friends, if you don't have the moral courage today to obey God, what makes you think that you will have the courage when the pressure is brought on? When you can't buy or sell without the mark, or you have actually been threatened with death. The fact is, some people are already actually facing this test. Some people, when they refuse to work on Saturday, they lose their jobs. With no job, actually, they have no money to buy. They can't sell their service to any unless they are actually willing to work on Sabbath. Some people are already actually facing the test. So really, the day that you choose to keep holy, now, now that you actually know the truth, is preparing you to either the, for either the seal of God or the mark of the beast. But the question, will religious registration one day be passed enforcing Sunday of Sabbath? The answer is yes. In fact, the Pope is urging for that. And I want you to be keen as we climax this. Very keen. For example, here is a statement from a, an apostolic letter drafted by the retired Pope Benedict XVI. It says, Therefore, also, in the particular circumstances of our own time, Christians will naturally strive to ensure that civil legislation respects their duty to keep Sunday holy. Civil legislation. That is, laws enforcing Sunday of Sabbaths. And that is coming. If someone is sleeping, now wake up. Catholic Online News had an article in 2014. When was that? 2014, which said, Never on Sunday. Pope Francis says, Working on Sunday has negative effects on families. The article said, The abandoning of the traditionally Christian practice of not working on Sundays has a negative impact on families and friendships, he says. Maybe it is time to ask ourselves if working on Sundays is true freedom. On October 10th, 2015, you can see it is coming closer, Pope Francis tweeted, Work is important, but so too is rest. Should it we learn to respect times of rest? especially Sundays. Here is a headline from Croatia, a country in Europe, total Croatian news in March of 2017. States, Catholic Church wants to ban working on Sunday. You see how close it is coming. This is 2017. In 2009, ABC News had an article which said, German court enforces day of rest. The subheading says, Germans Germany's highest court strictly enforces day of rest, bans Sunday shopping. Here is an article from CBS News in America entitled 30 Years of Sunday Morning, A History of Sunday. In the article it was telling 
about a book written by author Judith Shulbis. And it says, writer Judith Shulbis, in her upcoming book, The Sabbath World, in a world of 24-7 commands, she's pushing for a, a return to laws, for a return to laws that would shut down businesses one day a week. What do you think that will be? Sunday, of course. Which brings us back to the Puritans of the 1630s. Their measures may now seem extreme. Sunday of Sabbath was required on pain of death. But what if they were actually onto something? Actually, these secular articles, the secular news article states that in Puritan America, in 1600s, if you did keep Sunday holy, you could lose your life. And that is soon coming. And the article is suggesting that maybe that is not a bad idea. That is to require Sunday observance on pain of death. If you don't keep Sunday, psh. Bible prophecy predicts that it will happen again before Jesus comes back. The article, the Catholic Herald News on 25th November 2017 had an article entitled Poland to Face Out Sunday Shopping by 2020. The Utah's news had, an, had an actually a very interesting comment on that event. It said, Polish lawmakers approved legislation on Friday to gradually force all but the smallest shops to close on most Sundays from March 2018 in a move back by the powerful Catholic Church. Please notice the word force. There will be great pressure put upon the people's earth and peoples of the earth to receive the mark of the beast. The other you are forced, you are not buying, you are not selling. If you don't worship on Sunday, you are killed. Think of that. The pressure that is ahead of us will make us to be good Christians. Now let's come here home. This is Nyandarwa County, here in Kenya. Nyandarwa traders fight ban on Sunday market days. And there were traders fight ban on market on Sunday days. That will be that was on Monday, May 2018. And uh, that was passed by Kimenia. This has been and this will be. And we are just nearing that. We are not even sure that most of us can be able to finish our college courses before Jesus comes back or before this registration is put into place. Beloved, we are not even sure of this. The issue is more than what actually we, more, 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 it is more than what day we choose to keep. Sabbath or Sunday, the issue is who will you obey? Jesus Christ or Antichrist, the commandments of God or the commandments of men, the day we choose to keep indicates who we are loyal to. Implants, it's unlikely that the whole world will receive those implants. But when Sunday of service is actually enforced by law, then we, those who choose to keep Sunday because they believe in it will receive the mark in their forehead as a sign of belief. And those who keep Sunday not because they believe in it, but rather so they can be able to buy and sell and to avoid the threat of death, they receive the mark in the hand. And that shows outward compliance. And I should mention that the mark of the beast issue will actually go beyond the mere enforcement of Sunday as the day of rest of worship. Laws will eventually be made that require you to break the Sabbath Saturday. The devil knows that if you don't actually work on Sunday, you're not breaking any law or commandments. However, if you work on Sabbath Saturday, you're breaking God's commandments. God is actually calling us today to keep the Sabbath holy. He says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God in Exodus chapter 20 verse number 8. And Jesus tells us, if you love me, then do what? Keep my commandments. There will be a group of people at the end time, a small group, beloved, who love Jesus enough to keep his commandments. All, 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 the, the, all the ten of them, not to earn salvation, but because they love Jesus too much. The Bible pictures this victorious group in Revelation 15, verse number 2, 
This is evidently a scene from heaven. The Bible says, And I saw a sick one, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the hearts of God. Beloved, these are the saints in heaven. The question is, will you be in that world? Today, you can choose to obey God and to keep his day holy and prepare the seal of God. Will you receive the seal of God, the Sabbath, or the mark of the beast Sunday, when it is enforced by God? Beloved, who will you obey? God's commandments or man's wrong commandments? The question stands with you. But Jesus says, if you love me, then do what? Keep my commandments. My question is, do you love Jesus enough to sacrifice your life for the sake of his commandments and say, I stand for the truth which that comes on my way. Tonight, I want to give you another opportunity to accept Jesus. And I want to call forth for the ashes to pass some decision cards that you need to um, make. I want you to get a decision card tonight and make a decision whether to stand for the Lord or to stand for the devil. I want them to be passed so fast this evening to everyone so that we can be able to make some precious decisions. Beloved, we can very this is your time and this is your day. God is faithful and I keep you safe until he comes back the second time. The decision casting out will help you make that precious decision. Does everyone have now their card? Someone else has received one? If you haven't received, okay. I see most of us have received the cards. The first line, go with me, says, I understand the seal of God found in the heart of his law. Is the Sabbath, is the seventh day Sabbath. If that is clear to you from our study today, kindly put a check or tick in the first box. I understand that the seal of God found in the heart of his law is the seventh day Sabbath. The second line says, I choose not to worship the beast, receive it as mark, or follow any pagan traditions. If that is your commitment, your decision, put a check, mark, or a tick in the second box. I choose not to worship the beast or receive its mark or follow any pattern traditions. The third line says, I choose to keep the Sabbath, seventh day Sabbath, and worship, and to worship him that made heaven and earth. If you're already doing that, you can commit the commit today by putting a tick in the third box. If we are not yet keeping the seventh day Sabbath, Saturday as a holy day, why not make the decision today? Make the decision that I'm I'm standing for the Lord. The truth that I've heard is so overwhelming. I can't decide otherwise. <clears throat> Jesus invites you to make the choice because you love him. Don't think about your family or your job or your church. Think about Jesus. Beloved, he stands there with his arms open to you, inviting you to follow him. He will take care of those other concerns if you choose to obey him. He says, seek you first the kingdom of God and his graciousness and all these other things shall be added at you. Why not just say now, yes to Jesus. Put a tip in that third box. 
but I think. And uh, if you have done, you're not done, you're not actually yet done, can you fill in the bottom of your card with your name and the contact details? Kindly list if you are a church member and if so, indicate what church you are currently attending. We want you to have enough time to finish your card, so if you need more time, kindly take time while we sing the first stanza of this song. I will follow thee, my Savior, where so long my Lord may be. Where thou goest, I will follow. Yes, my Lord, I follow thee. I will follow thee, my Savior. Thou didst shed thy blood for me, and thou all men should forsake me. By thy grace I follow thee. Though the road be rough and thorny, chocolate sounds the foaming sea. Thou hast strong the way before me, and I will gladly follow thee. I will follow thee, my Savior. Thou didst shed thy blood for me, and no all men should forsake thee. By thy grace I follow thee. Though I live with tribulations, sorely tempted though I be, I remember thou wast tempted and rejoiced to follow thee. Thou didst shed thy blood for me, and though all men should forsake thee, by thy grace I follow thee. Though thou leadest me confusion, who forsake on mark. There is hope for you if it enforces law is dark. There is hope for you just do not his orders hard. But there is hope in Christ for you. There is hope for you the Sabbath is called a special seal. There is hope for you for love to God it, it does reveal. There is hope for you just accept God's sign is my appeal. There is hope in Christ for you. Beloved, tonight, we want us to make a prayer, silent last we seek for the face of the Lord, before we part ways. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, thank you for the gift of life, and thank you for the precious truths that we've had from the world. Forgive us our sins and wash us with thy blood that we should have the cross of Calvary. We've had deep and penetrating truths on how your world has been adulterated 
by the forces of darkness. But we want to thank you for your word that stands and that cannot be changed, for thou changest not. And Lord, we've had the truth about the Sabbath, that will be a bone of contention in the last days. Give us power to stand tall. Give us power to keep it, Lord, holy. Give us power to preach this message to the entire world and to prepare them for your soon return. Lord, we also call for power to stand tall to be content in the toughest and roughest time ahead of us. That not even the pressure and the enforcement of the National Sunday Law will make any one of us who has made a commitment with you to bow down to the idols. Help us all. Keep us safe as we part ways from this uh, lecture theater. We pray the Lord of heaven you may keep us safe until the kingdom of God. I want to keep thanking you, Lord, for your children making decisions on a daily basis, a commitment to get baptized into the true church as we wait for your kingdom to come. Cry us, Lord, all the way. Let your name be glorified now and forevermore. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.